Hey everybody, it's Maggie Mulhern from Modern Salon TV. I am here with the Mary Brunetti. I'm so excited to talk to her. We've known each other for decades and I've seen her with many, many hair colors. So. Haircuts, I, lo hair colors. I love this one. This Through the great. decades. <laughs> so we're here at the Intercoiffure Atelier uh, Spring. We're in Memphis, Tennessee, Tennessee. And, it, and it's spring 2018. Yes, and Mary just got off stage because uh, doing a whole thing about education and she's just so fabulous. So first of all, Mary Brunetti, please give us a little, uh, your little bio. Okay, so right now I'm the director of education at Sally Hirschberger Salons, New York City. I also own my own salon in the Hamptons and I've been running training programs for the past 20 years, maybe a little bit more. Before that, I was just freelance in New York City, um, hair for fashion magazines and Trevor Sorby found me and made me an educator and here I am. Yeah, she's done a lot of wonderful behind the scenes things. So, so you had a panel which was great, mm -hmm. and you were talking about things that salon owners need to know about education, and really the, the staff needs to know. And I just want to go over a couple sure. of those. Uh, so, the one thing you said is about being nice. How did you say that? Well, I've always felt that I can train anybody being an educator. I can train anybody to be world class. I cannot train you to be nice. Nice comes from within. Nice comes from the heart. So, in the interview process try to get people to talk about maybe some personal experiences, find out how they dealt with that because we truly want people who care for other people because we're in a caring people business. So, I mean, what would be a tip to, s to see how that person is? Have them talk about How's a grandmother? How's your relationship with your parents? You know, do you live nearby? Do you live with your parents? Oh, you don't, um, you know, d do they live nearby you and how often do you get to see them? And making small talk because sometimes they'll just start getting into drama. If they get into drama real quickly and it's never their fault, it's the other person's fault, to me that's a flag. And how important is it to be nice, be a nice person as a hairdresser? Well, you know, there are some hairdressers that are just nice and not that technically adept, you know, I, and they actually have big clientels, you know, just from being nice. So yes, it's it, to me, it's major, because like I said, if you're in a good salon with a good training program, they are going to train you to be good. But the nice part comes out every single day, 24-7. Okay, so let's talk about mannequin heads and educating with um, with your own equipment. Yeah, well, you know, there are some salons that don't believe in mannequin training. We just put our people on live models. You know, that's that's a little bit of a slippery slope because, you know, when you're first learning, and we like to take our people straight out of beauty school, even people who've been training for a long time doing hair, you know, they come to us with bad habits. So you don't want to take up the time of a live model sitting there while you're correcting, correcting, making improvements, correcting. Everybody starts on a clean slate with a mannequin. After they've performed a certain haircut a certain amount of times, then we'll bring in a live model because that's where they actually learn the most. Who's got a weird cowlick and who has a bad haircut from previous haircut. So I believe both are important, but I also believe that the stylist, the assistant, should be responsible for paying for the mannequin because I don't think people really value what they don't pay for. And, you know, they never lose their scissors or keep them in the salon. So, you know, they should be responsible. And you could, over time, and I didn't even get to say that up there, reimburse them. Maybe once they're on the floor. Then if they paid for their two mannequins during training, you could slowly uh, reimburse them for that. But it's very important, mannequin training. You can't skip it. Okay, and what about rotating? Well, I think that once um, once somebody is in training, you want to put them with your senior stylists who are exemplary, the people who really um, say what the culture of, you know, stand for what your culture truly is. So you rotate them from senior stylist to senior stylist to assist so they get the best of that person that you think is exemplary and that you want to create these kind of clones in a way. I only mean that culture-wise, not technique-wise. Um, so I think it's important to keep them flowing floating around the salon to different stylists, not getting locked into just assisting one. That could be not a good thing. So it's important to have a mentor, but maybe the word should be mentors. M several mentors, several mentors, yes, because everybody brings something different to the table. There are some people, um, some interns that I'll put with a senior stylist because they're great at customer service. Maybe somebody's great at graduated bobs and they're at that part of their training where they really need to learn how to do those more precise haircuts or razor cutting, you know, so then I put them with the stylist. That, you know, so for many different reasons, I rotate them around the salon. So that kind of goes against the other thing, which is consistency 
Uh, talk about that. Well, consistency starts in the beginning. So if you have a manual, and you should have a good updated training manual, I update mine constantly because things change. So you can really kind of guarantee quality, high quality, if they're, they're listening to the same voice every week through the manual, not through one particular trainer, but branding yourself through the manual, they're hearing that voice and those techniques every single week on a weekly basis really drives it home. So I've never approved of the salons that say, well, I just have my senior staff, somebody different stays every week. Well, th they're listening to too many mixed messages. And in the beginning, I mean, I can't imagine that somebody would come out of med school and be an intern in a hospital and not have gone through their college training. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so consistency in anything is key, anything. Um, and, then, and then to simplify things. Because, I don't know, I, I, I tend to think that a lot of salons and a lot of educators, I, th they want to reinvent the wheel and just make it so complicated so it sets them apart maybe in a way. But really, the, the, the techniques are simplistic at their core. Graduation, you know, um, cutting on a diagonal, uh, round layers, square layers. Those are pretty simple things. They don't take that many. I mean, I watch YouTube sometimes. Some hairdressers doing a haircut. They use so many techniques. By the time they get to the end of that haircut, they totally obliviated, obliviated, obliviated? <laughs> they obliterated, obliterated. Thank you. Through the haircut that they started doing it with over technique, over tech. Keep it simple, and then at the end personalize and make it yours. But you know, all you need to do is get the client from what they have to what they want. And you do that with a series of techniques, not by cutting the flavor of the month haircut. Learn your techniques, learn them well, and know how to apply them. It's that simple. That's so great. So we're here at Intercoiffure, and I got to tell you, this has been just an amazing day. We're, we're only yeah. in day one, and and why should people join Intercoiffure? Because there's such an exchange of information, like our panel. I had Lois Christie, Adam Broderick, Frank Ambuza, and myself, and I barely let them talk, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, I think they said between us there was something mm -hmm. like, they tried to add up the years. It was like 190 years of experience up there in four people. Um, do the math, but you know, it's just an exchange and everybody is so, so willing to open themselves up, be vulnerable, let you hear, this is how I screwed up, this is how I got better. And everybody kind of like, you know, so you give the best and the worst of your experience, everybody learns from that. Yeah, and the networking is incredible. incredible. And it's so funny because um, I just came uh, on stage now as Van Council and he's he said, opening a men's salon has right. been one of the most humbling things he's ever done because, you know, he thinks he, he knows everything. And everybody said, oh, it's going to be so easy. So easy, and he it said, it's what's not. What's easy? Yeah. If it was easy, like they say, everybody would have done it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Intercoiffure America Canada. Yeah. I think I said that right. And this is uh, Mary Brunetti, and how do people follow you? Oh, you can follow me at Mary Brunetti, and you can email me if you need any advice on training programs or if you want to purchase a training program. Have me come in, do an insulin training. Um, then you can just go to Mary at MaryBrunetti.style. Not dot com, Mary at Mary Brunetti, B R U N E T T I dot style. And thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.